guys, my name is Andy Conlin and I am the Assistant Outreach Specialist for Colorado State University's Comet Farm Team. We're uh, the leader of Dr. Keith Postian. Um, this is an intro presentation for carbon sequestration, greenhouse gas emissions related to agriculture, and an intro to tools for conservation planning and greenhouse gas mitigation in agriculture, more specifically Comet Farm and Comet Planner. And uh, today's demo is going to focus on animal agriculture. Um, Comet Farm is a little more complicated than Comet Planner, so we'll spend the majority of the time on that. Um, and I'll preface today's presentation by saying that I am not an animal ag expert. Um, so if there are any questions that I can't answer, um, I'll write them down and talk to my team and get back to you. Um, since it's a small group, it's just I see Laura and Nate on here. Um, we can keep questions kind of casual. Feel free to drop them in the chat throughout the presentation um, or I'll leave some time at the end as well. Um, so I'm presenting on behalf of my team here on the left. Um, we also want to expend, extend a special thanks to the NRCS and USCA Climate Change Office for their continued support in funding um, and the development of the Comet tools. Um, so a brief history of the tools. The USDA Climate Change Office and NRCS took things beyond the 2006 IPCC methods and developed the Blue Book Methods document, which I'll talk about in a few slides. Um, and that book defines the equations, methods, and models to quantify the agricultural emissions related to conservation methods within agriculture. Um, and then the Comet tools were, in, were created in parallel with and as a function of that Blue Book. Since Comet Farm launched in 2015, we've seen over 6,000 users of Comet Farm and over 53,000 sessions of Comet Planner. Um, and Comet Planner, that's since 2017. Because users can't create an account in Comet Planner, we can only measure the number of sessions rather than users. But we do know that users vary from farmers, ranchers, and planners to higher ed groups, businesses. Um, and I'll show you just a few that we can mention. Um, some of these users are featured in our Comet quarterly newsletter when they've offered to share kind of how they're using the tool. Um, some examples are Shelburne Farms in Vermont, American Farmland Trust, Carbon Cycle Institute, just to name a few. Um, the newsletters also tend to feature major updates to the tool and tips and tricks on how to use the tool. And I'll show you exactly where you can access that once we're on the homepage during the demo. As a nexus for greenhouse gas mitigation in agriculture, Comet is used by various federal and state level programs, as well as um, in the past by private carbon markets such as Norway. It's, Comet itself is entirely independent of the carbon markets and does not advise on credits nor answer questions in regards to carbon credits. Um, it's solely an estimation tool. The methods defined in the USDA's blue book and therefore in Comet are not in for emissions or trading. So any questions regarding carbon credits should be pointed in the direction of carbon markets. Um, in terms of federal level programs, we are and will be seeing an uptick in users who plan to use the Comet tools for their partnerships for climate smart commodities projects. Um, if that's applicable, I'll uh, be sending a link to a survey in my follow-up email. Um, and that survey is just intended to help the Comet team support the influx of new users. Um, both the Comet Farm and Planner tools are web-based greenhouse gas inventory tools for land-based systems and designed for conservation scenario analysis. Um, or else that you see here. Um, but Comet Planner is also accessible through Comet Farm. Um, the Comet Farm tool is a modeling platform that implements those USDA sanctioned methods and models. And in 2017, 2018, Comet Planner was created as a more simple, a simpler tool for regional assessments to visualize general benefits at the regional scale. And I'll dive a little deeper into the differences between those throughout the presentation. But first, let's talk about what we are actually assessing. 
Um, soil related emissions are calculated through the day scent model in Comet Farm, which I'll talk about in a few slides. Um, but it's worth noting that in um, September of 2022, we switched from the 20 cent to a land inventory. Um, so we're looking at the top 30 centimeters of soil. Um, in this example, we see that a conversion from intensive to no-till on 60 acres of a corn-soy rotation in central Iowa equates to an estimated reduction of 52 metric tons of CO2 equivalent emissions annually, which is about the equivalent to removing the emissions from around 11 passenger vehicles for a year. Um, however, we are focusing today on animal ag. Um, and animal ag is not run using Dacent. So even though throughout the presentation, I'm going to be talking about Dacent, just know that today's animal ag accounting um, run, runs using empirical models and not Dacent. Um, in today's demo, we're going to be looking at switching from an anaerobic lagoon to an anaerobic digester in Comet Farm. Um, in the example that we see here on the screen, we're only looking at a dairy heifer replacements, but during our demo, we have lactating cows and dairy dry cows as well. Um, but the change that we see here for 85 dairy heifer replacements has effects of sequestering carbon from around 114 acre acres of US forests in one year. So the Comet tool has four modules. Orchard vineyard. There's animal ag, which we'll look at today, agroforestry, and forestry. Um, these modules are independent of one another and don't talk to each other. So any multi-accounting project will, will present those reports separately. Um, the Comet tool is designed to do an entire greenhouse gas inventory within an entity. So we're looking at uh, a cropland or heads of livestock or however you might define that. Um, it's worth noting that we're not looking at any upstream or downstream emissions, so no manufacturing or transportation emissions are going to be included. Um, and we're also focused on three the three main, main greenhouse gas gases associated with agriculture, so carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. The infographic that you see here was created by a colleague of mine, Amy Swan, as an introduction to the 2007 IPCC assessment. Um, within that diagram, you can see several sources releasing gases and sinks taking in each of these gases. And depending on which arrows graphic are gonna correspond to the outputs on the Comet Farm report um, the com and Comet Planner, that report goes into less detail, which I'll show in a few slides. Um, <clears throat> so the Comet Farm tool is a modeling platform that implements more than 40 different USDA sanctioned methods and models. Um, they were developed in parallel with as, and as a function of the Blue Book document that's pictured here. It implements data models that simulate all the greenhouse gas emissions that have been emitted within a defined entity from manure to fertilizer, burning, and other management practices. As I mentioned, um, soil-related emissions are calculated through the DACENT model. And again, we switch to the 30 centimeter DACENT model to align with the national inventory. Whereas accounting for animal ag and but uh, different livestock have different empirical models associated with them. Um, and that is the same case for forestry and agroforestry as well. Um, Comet also has an energy tool to estimate fuel related emission reductions, but these are not going to be linked to your account, nor will it be linked to any of your projects. Um, so if you want to include any fuel related emissions, you can use Comet Energy. And again, this is because. Um, the Comet tools are not a life cycle analysis tool, and so we're not estimating up any upstream or downstream emissions. Um, emission reductions that would be associated with fuel reductions in your report will not be captured in your Comet Farm report, but if you do want to capture that, you can use Comet Energy or a similar energy calculator that I'm sure is out there. 
Um, again, all of these methods are defined in the USDA's quantifying greenhouse gas fluxes and agriculture and forestry, which is available to the public on the USDA website, as well as the Comet Farm homepage. Um, it's worth noting that a new updated version of this Blue Book document was released for public comment, I believe in June. Um, and since then, only at the beginning of August did they close public comment. And now they're reviewing those comments. So hopefully sometime this fall or sooner, ideally, um, we'll get that updated version of the blue book. And then Comet will be the Comet tools will be updated in accordance with those changes as well. Um, so broadly, to break it down even simpler, um, Comet Farm and Comet Planner are built around conservation scenario analysis. So Comet Farm gives the user the ability to input farm or field specific historical management practices and baseline data. So what you wanna compare any new practices to. And it superimposes potential conservation practices defined by the user in scenarios. Um, so that's things like adjusting your tillage, your fertilizer, burning events um, to compare the benefits relative to the baseline or your kind of business as usual. Um, in Comet Planner, you're still adding some kind of change in management, but you're selecting from a list of NRCS practice standards to compare to a fixed baseline. Um, so that's all to say that users can't change the baseline, rather you can select from a set of baselines. Um, in Comet Farm, you can compare emissions, looking at what the emissions would be if you continued with your current management versus continue, continuing with your future management. Whereas Comet Planner is, as the name suggests, simply a planning tool. Um, it pulls from regional averages to get a broad description of the practice benefit from adding that conservation practice. Um, similar to the cropland or rangeland accounting activity in Comet Farm where users can compare scenarios against the baseline. Users can do this for animal agriculture as well. Um, animal ag accounting activity is not going to include any soil carbon benefits being distributed on the paddock. Um, this kind of management would need to be accounted for in a cropland project because it's outside the bounds um, of animal ag accounting. So within Comet Planner, um, on the other hand, there are limited animal ag related practices depending on your location. Some of those include silva pasture, prescribed grazing, range planning, nutrient management, or kind of a combination of the above. And uh, we'll look at that when we hop into our demo as well. So to compare the tools, uh, because users can create a, or can enter a flexible baseline with the exact management um, in Comet Farm, uh, users are generating a detailed farm to field specific conservation scenario analysis. In Comet Planner, on the other hand, it provides regional average estimates tied to conservation practice adoptions based on a fixed baseline, which I'll show how that's generated in a few slides. Um, due to the details that users need to provide, Comet Farm does require more time investment um, for entering details and then um, sometimes the amount of time it might take to run a report. Um, whereas Comet Planner uh, only takes four clicks about and generates on the fly results when users enter or select a conservation scenario and enter the acreage that it's applied to. And I'll demo that in a few slides. Um, you can download your report on both tools. However, you can only save a project and return to it later in Comet Farm when you create an account. You can access the Comet Farm cropland accounting activity via an API, um, which could be useful if you were uh, looking to assess thousands upon thousands of acres of land, which would be tedious on the user interface. Um, However, while we have some guiding documents on how to access Comet Farm through the API, we don't host trainings like this one. So anyone who wants to use the API should be familiar with them. Um, Comet as an API, rather the entire Comet Planner data set is available to download after you enter just a few details on how you intend to use it. 
So I'm going to dive into kind of a bird's eye view of Comet Farm before we go into Comet Planner. Um, so again, as I move forward talking about DASIN, just a reminder that, that this is only relevant to cropland accounting, um, but it's a good overview of Comet Farm in general. So just know that for the animal ag demo today, this is not applicable. Um, so the decent model, which is outlined within the USDA blue book, blue book mentioned before, um, runs simulations about how crops are grown, how grazing events can impact nitrogen and carbon cycling through the soil and ecosystem, um, how crops are harvested, how the crop residue decomposes, how carbon fluctuates between different sources and sinks, um, and integrates kind of the physical properties of the soil, like temperature and moisture as well. Um, specifically in Comet Farm, we're using the Sergo soil database and the PRISM weather data set to drive the model. And all the information driving the model comes from a data set developed from peer-reviewed studies from over 200 sites going back 170 years and is maintained by universities and private corporations. And again, remember, this model is only used when using cropland pasture, rangeland, orchard, vineyard, um, whereas statistical models are used for animal act. So an overview of Comet Farm, users provide information about specific management practices and their location. And this information is used in combination with historical practice, along with the climate and soil data from PRISM and Sergo. Uh, this is combined with a number of USD. Um, and then those would drive the decent model when in cropland. Um, this generates outputs, which are returned to the user as results demonstrated in either tabular or graphical form. Um, cropping rotations, historical management, soil data, and the decent model are not used in animal ag. So then the tool executes the model, the models and allows users to see how their practice changes can impact carbon and nitrogen in their field. Um, while different practices impact different greenhouse gas fluxes, uh, the results are simplified in terms of metric tons of CO2 equivalent. Um, the decent model uh, allows users to kind of see that change. If you recall back to the system model of greenhouse gas fluxes, each category and subsource category um, on the results page is associated with an arrow. So again, we see that infographic here up on the right. Um, when you extend the greenhouse gas categories into subsource categories, you can view the final equations used to calculate the emissions. But note that this is not an exhaustive list. Um, and so some of the intermediate equations are not included. And did I skip a, okay, no, good. Um, I mentioned earlier that the carbon markets use the Comet models through the API, which is a side door entrance to the tool and is only available in the cropland accounting activity in Comet Farm. Um, again, it's designed for large scale analysis and API users do need to create an account in Comet, um, but none of the model runs are going to be saved to that account. Um, instead, it runs on the Google Cloud, and after the 51st free model runs per day per user, we would need to start charging a small fee for it to run more per day. Um, as I mentioned, we don't host any trainings like this for the API, but we do have a GitLab repository to help users get started. Um, and again, there's an understanding that if someone were to access Comet through the API, they are in fact familiar with APIs. Um, the API requires XML input files where there are, and there are examples of that in the GitLab. Uh, each line in the XML file will match the inputs on the user interface. So it's important to uh, understand the workings of the interface prior to engaging with the API. And similarly, when a file is run, your outputs will also generate an XML output, um, where again, the lines are going to match the type of outputs on the interface. Um, API users are not going to get a tabular or graphical report. Okay, now let's take a quick look at Comet Planner. 
Um, as mentioned at the beginning, the idea behind the Comet Planner tool was to create one, create a tool that was simpler, easier to use, and could demonstrate the relative benefits of NRCS conservation practices within a given region against the baseline data. So all you need to know is your location, the conservation practice you'd like to assess, and how many acres that's being applied to. For the Comet Planner tool, random cropland and grassland points were identified within each of the around 230 different agricultural regions in the country, um, defined by the NRCS as major land resource areas. Um, crop rotations for each point were constructed from the USDA NAS cropland data layer back to 2008 in every region of the country. And then additional survey data like average fertilizer rates for crops by state and average crop planning and harvest data for each state were added and thus became the baseline for the modeling analysis. On each data point, we superimposed the conservation practice or practices selected on top of the baseline and then modeled both. So those same methods, models, soil and weather data is used. Um, all the user needs to do is select a state and county, select from a class of conservation practices and fixed baselines, enter the acreage they wish to apply that practice to, and on the fly, Comet Planner will provide average regional benefits of conservation practice adoption. Um, and Comet Planner is able to generate those estimates for 34 NRCS conservation practice standards within the contiguous US and West.